If you're looking for a video on a specific topic, simply type in what you're looking for in my channel search bar. And if I have videos addressing that topic, it will take you right to them. What's up you guys, it's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you guys are here with me because we're gonna be talking about the top 52 vocabulary GRE words and I have a special gift for one of you. This is by no means a sponsored video But I did partner with Kaplan for one of my previous videos and QBanks for the pants prep And they were gracious enough to give one of you access to their QBank for their GRE prep If you are interested in entering and hearing more information about how you can get access to the GRE prep through Kaplan Just go to the description box below and I will leave all the details in that box for you guys. Without further ado, let's talk about the top 52 GRE vocabulary words. And the title says, the top 52 GRE words, definitions, and examples, which is good because you're gonna need an example just kind of make it um, true to you and make you understand it a little bit more. So the first one is anomaly. It's a noun, it's something that is unusual or unexpected. The student's poor performance on the latest test was an anomaly since she had previously earned excellent grades. Now, um, I suggest that you use these words in your everyday life. Um, it's it, these. This is something that I kind of use here and there, but it's very, very beneficial if you're able to use these words in your everyday life because it makes it more familiar to you. So when you see it, you're not going to be like, what is this? Anomaly? Anomaly, what is that, right? So make sure you do that, okay? Second word, equivocal. Not easily understood or explained. Politicians have been known to provide equivocal answers to reporters' questions. Third word is lucid. Adjective, again, very clear and easy to understand. The lecture was lucid and straightforward allowing the students to fully grasp the concepts presented. Now, I've never used lucid in this term. I mean, when I'm talking about lucid, I usually use it in terms of like water um, or uh, in terms of a particular, um, you know, test that we're doing in chemistry and be like, oh, was it lucid? Um, so I, it's, I talk about it in that terms. And if you are sciencey like me, that may be a term that you've heard before or a term that you've used. But if you're not, again, use these terms um, just kind of in your everyday life. So like the water was lucid. It wasn't brackish, I guess is what you can say, which means kind of like mucky. Precipitate, this is a verb, to cause something to happen quickly or suddenly. Unforeseen cause can precipitate a budget crisis. Yes, it can. <laughs> Assuage, this is a verb to make an unpleasant feeling less intense, which is good. A massage can assuage the soreness in your muscles. And I use this a lot, actually, um, just kind of talking about, oh, let's just assuage this situation. All right, <laughs> erudite, adjective, having or showing great knowledge. High school students often struggle with novels that are more erudite than they are entertaining. I mean, I think that's anyone. I mean, we all wanna be entertained, so we're obviously gonna have a little bit of a struggle. Opaque, so you can use opaque and lucid because let's listen to the definition of opaque not able to see through, not easily understood. Medical jargon includes many opaque terms like macrosomic, which describes a newborn who weighs more than 4,000 grams. Now again, so like I've never used opaque in terms of, hey, like this was not easily understood. I've never used it in that manner. I've used it more so in the not able to see through. So it wasn't lucid, it was opaque, or it wasn't opaque, it was lucid, right? So that's kind of how I use it. But understanding that it has more than one definition is what is going to be key for you acing your GRE because sometimes they might not use it in terms of being able to see through. It's it's just more so that they might use it like, oh, this is not easily understood. And then you have to pick the one that kind of best shows that. So if you didn't realize that opaque also means not easily um, 
also means not easily understood, then you can be like, oh, okay, well, if something is like not easy to see through, I guess kind of sort of could be not easily understood. So that could be opaque, right? So you kind of have to like work it out. But this is how you have to approach the verbal section in the GRE, okay? Prodigal, adjective, wasteful or extravagant. Now, if you're a Christian or if you've read the Bible, you know about the prodigal son. What did he do? He went to his dad. He asked him for some money. He said, give me my money. I want to go. I'm tired of working for you. And then he went and he spent all of that money. And then he was like, what? Like my father has all of this money and he has really good servants in his house that eat well and I'm eating with the pigs. Let me go back to my dad's house. And he was the prodigal son. He was extravagant and wasteful. And that is what this definition is also talking about. The prodigal prince bought lavish gifts and planned expensive events. Remember that story about the prodigal son? I promise you, you will understand it when you see it on the test. Okay, enigma. It's a noun. A person or a thing that is mysterious, puzzling, or difficult to understand. Which is, this is really cool, you guys, because when I was studying for the GRE, I used this word a lot when I originally met my now husband, who was just kind of like some guy that I was talking to at the time. Because he was an enigma. I'd call him, I'd be like, man, you're an, an enigma. Because, you know, you're like not really something that I understand because you're not like the other guys that I used to with and so that was my thing and that's what this is talking about it says scientists continue to research cancer to solve the enigma of its primary cause which will hopefully lead to a cure so again make it true to you make it like something that you can easily understand or relate to because that's what's going to be able to stick with you so when you see it on GRE day you're not going to be like blown away and you're going to do really well fervent Intensely enthusiastic or passionate. The child showed a fervid fascination for superheroes pouring over comic books for hours. Um, again, this is the church girl in me coming out. Like there was, I think here, they're always talking about like a fervid prayer. So um, that's kind of like how I remembered that word. Placate, this is my word, y'all. I use this word all the time, I promise you. like. Ask my friends, I use this, okay? It says, to make someone less angry or hostile. Now, um, it says a parent may decide to placate a baby with a pacifier. I use this, I'll be like, all right, let's just kind of placate this situation, all right? Like, you know, let's kind of like make it less hostile. And I use that a lot when I'm trying to like, let's just calm down everybody, let's just talk about it. That's the, uh, the Adana slash social worker slash, psychiatrist, uh, tris, psychologist in me, um, you know, in a past life coming out. But that's, that is my word. I love it. I use it all the time. I have a zeal for it. Zeal is our 12th word. It says a strong feeling of intent a strong feeling of interest and enthusiasm that makes someone very eager or determined to do something. The great emperor's crusading zeal led him to conquer many lands. Um, and yeah, so like, if you have a zeal to ace your GRE, go ahead and continue to look at this video and see the top 52 words. Abstain, to restrain oneself for doing or enjoying, so that's supposed to be from. To restrain oneself from doing or enjoying something. Doctors encourage their patients to abstain from smoking cigarettes. And again, the church girl in me, you know, you're supposed to abstain from any sexual intercourse before marriage. <laughs> so that's how I remember that. Okay, audacious, right? A willingness to take bold risk, showing a lack of respect. Um, the new CEO pers pursued audacious in initiatives to save the company from bankruptcy. The student's audacious remark earned her a seat in an <laughs> after <laughs> afternoon detention. All right, yeah, so the audacious, obviously, um, you know, it's also, you, 
it's I don't know like it's kind of like it's related to like the audacity of you like how audacious are you or the audacity of you to actually think that you can talk to me like that no that's not happening and so again like like, use it in real life like use that to somebody that's trying to hate on you look like you have some audacity like to really think that you can come up in here and talk to me like that no wow how audacious there you go desiccate Remove the moisture from something. Um, again, if you are into sciences, you know this uh, this word a lot. The heat and energy from the sun can desiccate even the most hardy plants. Um, gullible, easily persuaded to believe something. I think this is a word that most people understand or or you know have heard sometime before. But if you haven't, this word means the gullible little boy gave his older sister all of his allowances because. She told him she would buy a pony for him. Yes, that was very gullible. I love this word, um, laudable, right? Deserving praise and commendation. Providing affordable health care for all citizens is a laudable goal. Or if you are like into basketball, like I kind of (laughs) am, you know, when basketball season rolls around, be like, yo, did you see LeBron last night? That performance was laudable, (laughs) right? So again, just use the finding ways to use these words is very important. Pedant. A person who makes an excessive display of learning. Professor Blackwell, a well-known pedant, required his pre-med students to speak in Latin throughout the entire semester. That is crazy. I mean, I hope y'all was okay. <laughs> it's like if this was real, you know, like that's a lie. Like, man, vacillate. So to waver between different opinions or actions. And it kind of sounds like that or vacillate, right? You're like vacillating or however you want to say it um, or that's depending on you, but if you're vacillating between two points, that kind of makes sense. It sounds like what the word means. So undergraduate students offer, often vacillate among various majors before deciding which degree to pursue. Adulterate, to make something impure or weaker by adding something of inferior quality. Many chefs use fresh produce and refuse to adulterate their dishes with canned ingredients. Now, again, like I don't usually use the word adulterate, but I use unadulterated, right? So I'll be like, man, like that was pure unadulterated hate that you just threw my way, right? <laughs> like so you can you can use these words, um, sound very intelligent, but at the same time just like make it real life. Like on the real, like stop hating. Yeah? All right, capricious, given to sudden changes of mood or behavior. The capricious supervisor would hand out raises one day and fire his entire staff the next day. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Definitely don't want to work for him. Engender, to produce, cause, or give rise to something. Political date... Political debates can engender controversy regarding the subjects discussed. Homogeneous, of the same or similar kind. There are very few truly homogeneous cultures since social diversity is increasingly widespread. And I mean, homogeneous is something that you hear a lot in science anyway. So if you are taking the GRE for something science related, then it's something that you've heard before. Loquacious, this was my word, which is crazy because these are the top 52 words for 2018, but loquacious was one of my words that I was studying, when did I take the GRA? Five years ago. So this is crazy that it's still on the list. And this is one of the words that I studied and I loved a lot because of the meaning. So loquacious says, tending to talk a great deal, which I am being loquacious at this very moment, but the loquacious professor was known for his five hour lectures. Now, if it was on my GRE test three years ago, and again, this is one of the top 52 GRE words for 2018, ding, 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 
study this word, you guys. <laughs> you might see it coming up in the near future, but it's like, it was my favorite, favorite word that I studied. Pragmatic, dealing with the problems that exist in a reasonable and logical way instead of depending on theories. A pragmatic approach to legislation can be difficult, even the complexities of, given the complexities of politics. Volatile, likely to change rapidly and unpredictably. It's possible for a country's political climate to remain volatile for decades. Or, like I like to use it, you know, this is like a serious volatile situation. Let's get up out of here. <laughs> that's what I, that's how I use that word. All right, apathy. It's a noun. Lack of interest, enthusiasm, or concern. Political parties try to engage young voters who are more prone to apathy than older citizens. Which is true. I mean, you're trying to get the young people out. So that's true. Corroborate. It's a verb to confirm or make more certain. The scientist was able to corroborate his hypothesis with data gathered from multiple sources. So again, like, so I've heard this word obviously like before multiple times because just a little bit of information that many of you may not know about me. I love like crime shows, you know, like CSI and um, what is it? Like Shades of Blue and um, I like Dexter and like anything crime related, I was in it and I still am. I still like those type of shows. But like if you're watching like elementary or something, they're always talking about, oh, we need a witness to corroborate your story. And that is what it means to confirm or make certain, more certain your story. I want to know that what you're saying is true. And so if you see these words or you hear them out in the real world, hold on to that. <laughs> hold on to that that you heard so that you're able to be like, okay, yeah, th I heard this. This is what it means. Ephemeral. Lasting for a very short time. An ephemeral moment of victory may last mere seconds, but it can remain as a triumphant memory for decades. Iconic. Using few words. <laughs> it's not cool, like, because the definition is just a few words. That's really cool. The student's iconic response suggested that she did not know very much about the topic the professor was discussing. Mitigate. Make less severe, serious, or painful. We want to mitigate students' GRE stress by offering helpful study tools. Good one. I want to mitigate your GRE stress as well. And so that is why I am giving you guys a free gift, giving you guys access to a question bank so you can study and be more comfortable with all of the possible questions that you could get. Propriety. The state or quality of being correct or proper. The students were instructed to have behavior with the utmost propriety while on their class field trip. Advocate, publicly recommend or support. The governor chose to advocate for her for a higher minimum wage rather than a tax incentive. Cophony, a harsh, unpleasant mixture of sounds. The cacophony of this middle school band warming up was nearly unbearable for the audience. Now, again, so you have phony in there, so you are already thinking like this has to do with music. And like cacophs kind of sounds like really bad. So like you can, that's how a way that you can kind of remember it if you don't know the word already or if it's not something that you're familiar with. Innervate. Cause someone or something to feel drained of energy or weakened. The boxer used a swift left uppercut to the jaw to innervate his op opponent. <laughs> All right, let's go. Cool. Uppercut to the jaw. Ingenuous, innocent and unsuspecting. The scam artist preyed on ingenuous nursing home residents. Come on now. Grandma and grandpa, that's who you praying on? No, don't do it. Misanthrope, a person who dislikes humankind. <laughs> the neighborhood misanthrope surrounded his yard with barbed wire to keep people away. Well, then y'all stay away. A paradox, a statement that contradicts itself, but may be true. 
The fact that the retired teacher claimed to hate all pets but adopted seven cats is an intriguing paradox. Yeah, so it's kind of like runs in kind of hand in hand with um, an enigma, like something that you just kind of don't understand. Like a paradox doesn't really make that much sense. So I'm like, oh, that's very paradoxical. Venerates. Regard with great respect. To venerate the fire chief's 40 years of service, the department held a special banquet. This word was also on my GRE test, just to let you guys know. Um, I remember studying it as well. I remember flipping through my flashcards on this quite often. All right, deride. To express contempt for ridicule. The unreasonable supervisor was known to deride his employees on a daily basis. Not cool. Eulogy. A speech that praises someone, typically someone who has recently died. The rabbi's eulogy was both heartfelt and inspiring. And I mean, if any of you have ever lost someone or just in the news, I mean, there was Aretha Franklin and she had a eulogy done. So that might be something that you can, you know, hold on to. Just understanding how to pronounce the words and then see them. That's good. Because like pedant. You could think that it said pendant, and then you can pick a wrong, you know, the wrong definition because your brain saw something different. You read it differently, like you kind of rush through it. So understanding that you need to just take your time, read the words, read the definitions that they have there, and then go from there and pick the right one is important. Lethargic lacking energy it's not uncommon it's not uncommon to feel lethargic for weeks or even months after major surgery now lethargic is something that we use a lot in um pa school and just in medicine in general um it's part of like what you use to describe someone on the glasgow coma scale so like uptended or stupor or lethargic so this is something that i'm very familiar with uh it's something that i used a lot i'm like man i feel so lethargic but now that i know the true definition of it with respect to the glasgow coma skull i'm not really lethargic you guys i'm just tired <laughs> i'm just tired obdurate Stubbornly refusing to change one's opinion. The obdurate three-year-old refused to eat any vegetables, no matter how they were prepared. That is like my little obdurate three-year-old, okay? She just does not listen, you guys. Maybe somebody can help me out on that front, okay? I'm helping y'all out with these words. Please help me out with my obdurate three-year-old. Please and thank you. <laughs> Philanthropic, seeking to promote the welfare of others. The students were grateful to receive financial support from the philanthropic organizations that promote education. I mean, you guys have heard this, like philanthropy, um, you know, just doing good work. So again, just kind of putting it into light, making more sense of it. Waver, to go back and forth between choices or opinions. So again, what was this related to? What did we just say that was talking about going back and forth? Vacillate. What was that? Like, what accent was that? You know, like my Trinidadian accent coming out a little. And I'm not really sure what I was saying just now, but <laughs> it was vacillate, right? So that was wavering back and forth. Some, cit some citizens vote solely along party lines and never waver in their political decision. Same thing, never wavering. Bolster, to support or strengthen. The prosecutor worked to find evidence that would bolster her case against the defendant. Dissonance, a lack of harmony or agreement. The school board's meetings lasted for hours due to the lengthy debate fueled by dissonance among opinions. Garrulous, excessive talking, kind of like loquacious. The garrulous hairstylist talked to each customer for hours at a time. Time. Malleable, easily influenced, pliable, right? It's malleable. Children's moods are often malleable since children are greatly affected by their surroundings. Ostentation, excessive display of wealth. Owning a mansion doesn't imply ostentation, but traveling exclusively by private jet certainly does. Prevaricate. 
Avoid telling the truth by not directly answering a question. During the trial, the lead witness was willing to prevaricate in order to protect his friend. I like that, you know, prevaricate. I like that word. Um, I think we do it a lot. I think people do it a lot where they avoid things. They kind of skirt around the answers, right? But that is it, you guys. I mean, hopefully this was helpful. That was the 52 top words on the GRE um, for the 2018 and clearly for the 2015 exam as well because I saw a lot of these words. Um, if you haven't seen my video, everything you need to know about the GRE in eight minutes, go right now. I'm going to leave a link for that. You hit that video up as well. In it, I talk about making Quizlets and how I used flashcards to study for my vocab. And so again, I have another little gift for you guys. I am going to make a flashcard via Quizlet for you guys on all of these words. Um, I will leave a link for it and that way you guys can go through the Quizlet and study and test yourself on these words um, and you will be 52 words smarter, right? And you will be ready to take on those 52 words for the GRE. Again, hit up my description box to find out all the details on how you get access to Kaplan's QBank for the GRE um, and also again for the Quizlet. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions for me, leave them down in my comment section. Follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA, and I will talk to you guys next time. Happy studying! Bye!